Not long ago, we published a video called The Secrets of Sacred Geometry and Those Who Mastered It, a Gaia exclusive which featured the work of Dr. Robert Gilbert, a PhD and former nuclear biological chemical defense Marine Corps instructor who became the founder of the Veska Institute for Holistic Studies. In that video, Dr. Gilbert shared profound information about the invisible matrix of energy underlying our material reality, which he described is based on essential geometric structures, something we often know as sacred geometry. Today, we are honored to share the second episode in that series, where Dr. Gilbert will take us further into comprehending four major secrets of the human energetic field. When we understand that light and consciousness are in essence the same thing, we are able to perceive through the limitations of the material form to the underlying spirit from which all things come. Buckle up, this is an amazing video. Welcome, I'm your host, Dr. Robert J. Gilbert. In this episode, we will explore four major secrets of sacred geometry. These secrets will guide us into learning a very powerful method which can activate any energy center in your body or energy field. You'll learn in this episode how to apply this method to activate the most important energy center in the human head, what in the Himalayan tradition is called the Cave of Brahma. This exploration will lead us into the highest sources of inspiration and spiritual visions and into the many levels of our multidimensional world. Our first great secret of sacred geometry reveals the true source of all physical manifestation. This secret is that sacred geometry patterns are in reality thought forms in the mind of God, which become the divine blueprints for all of creation. Let's start with an important development in human spiritual evolution, that large numbers of human beings are increasingly experiencing inner visions of the sacred geometry patterns behind the physical plane, along with visions of the higher worlds which interact with the physical. These sacred geometry thought forms which more and more people are experiencing are in actuality packets of divine consciousness, holding inside of them pure structural patterns, which then move down from the higher planes to manifest on every level of creation. These sacred geometric visions can come whenever we release our contracted perception of the physical world and expand into deeper levels of awareness. In my 30 years of publicly teaching sacred geometry, in every class I would have students tell me that the pattern I had just taught them was one that they had seen before. Students told me they had seen the pattern internally in a dream, in a vision, in an ayahuasca journey, or other psychotropic experience, or in a transmission from a spiritual teacher. In some cases, they had been taught a specific sacred geometry pattern as a private secret of a tradition into which they received initiation being told they could never mention it to anyone outside the tradition, and then being astonished when they found out in my class that it was actually a part of the complete sacred geometry pattern language known to multiple traditions. Ancient traditions knew that these sacred geometry patterns which underlie all of creation are in reality, in their deepest essence, thought forms from the mind of God. So our visions of these sacred geometry patterns can at their highest level mean a literal communion of our human mind with the divine mind. This experience can transform our deepest sense of ourselves and of what our true potential really is. This idea that the basis of creation is sacred geometric patterns is related to the findings of some modern physicist who say that the evidence in modern physics shows that the essence of all creation is not physical matter, but consciousness. A key aspect of consciousness being the foundation of all existence 
is that light and consciousness are the exact same thing. This is embedded in Genesis, with creation beginning with the statement, let there be light. Modern physics says that everything is fundamentally energy and that light exists both as a physical particle and as an energy wave. Light is the fundamental constant of nature, linking the concepts of physical mass and energy together in the famous E equals mc squared equation of Einstein. Light sets the speed limit for the physical plane. Modern physics says that nothing in the physical world can travel faster than the speed of light. This has all led to the concept that everything physical is actually made of light, and that physical matter is simply light energy in a specific state of materialization. Ancient traditions knew that when consciousness is experienced externally, it appears as light. And when light appears internally, inside of us, we experience it as consciousness. This is why auras of brilliant light are always sown in classical traditions around great initiates, either just around their head with the activation of their consciousness or around their entire body and energy field with higher levels of initiation and self-transformation. This brings us to what we might call the first letter in the alphabet of sacred geometry forms which create the world. This is the ancient symbol of the point in the center of the circle. This was the hieroglyph for the spiritual being of the sun, Ra'a, in ancient Egypt, and became the image for the sun in astrology. Just as creation comes from light, the source of light and life in our earthly lives is the sun. This same symbol is used as the sign for gold in alchemy. Ancient traditions understood gold to be a physical crystallization of the same energy quality as in sunlight. This pattern is also the sign for the Godhead, the source of creation in both the Rosicrucian and Masonic traditions. As seen in this image, based on the work of the Rosicrucian initiate, Rudolf Steiner. The Godhead is the divine unity, the original unified field where all is one. The macrocosm is the higher world which emerges from that unity. The macrocosm contains the Godhead broken up into discrete pieces, into a multitude of spiritual beings, worlds, and creative processes. The microcosm contains that same totality of the Godhead, but broken up into pieces of denser, smaller levels of manifestation, reaching down to the vital energy, physical, and electromagnetic levels. We will see in a future episode that the hexagram of the macrocosm and the pentagram of the microcosm are sacred geometry keys to unlocking two essential levels of every human being, the astral body of consciousness and the etheric or pranic body of vital energy. These are also key parts of the Merkaba, the human soul vehicle. We have to switch our understanding of sacred geometry from being static forms to instead focus on the living, dynamically vibrating energy fields which create these forms. When dealing with sacred geometry forms like the point in the center of the circle, think of these forms as being similar to electronic circuit diagrams, showing energy patterns which we can directly apply for practical purposes. The point in the center of the circle is a two-dimensional image. It becomes in three dimensions the point in the center of the sphere of creation, with dynamic movement between the center and the boundary of creation within the sphere. In modern physics, the so-called Big Bang Theory is misunderstood by most of the general public. The theory does not say that some unknown explosion filled up an already existing space and time with physical things. Rather, it says that an original outward movement from a zero-dimensional point, the singularity, 
created space and time through the outward expansion of the point, which created an expanding sphere of the three-dimensional physical world that we live in. In other words, a sacred geometric movement from the point to the surrounding sphere is the foundation of all creation in modern physics. The concept that the geometric center is the source of all creation and is a literal gateway to the divine plane is found in classical spiritual traditions. It is prominent in the Indian tradition as the Bindu point of divine light, found in the exact center of Indian yantras, of the mandalas of Eastern traditions, and sacred geometric forms in general. In modern times, Dr. Ibrahim Karim of Cairo, Egypt, has demonstrated that there is a powerful, subtle energy quality that is literally present in the center of all geometric forms. This powerful energy of the center appears in both two-dimensional geometric drawings and in three-dimensional forms. As long as the boundary information of the geometric form is present in space, like a conducting wire in an electrical circuit, this subtle energy appears in the center of the geometric form. Dr. Karim developed methods to directly detect and apply this powerful subtle energy of the center, leading to the creation of the new energy science called biogeometry. The subtle energy quality from the geometric center, Dr. Karim was able to demonstrate replicatable biological effects on living beings at the Egyptian National Research Center and in multiple international university and medical studies. Classical traditions described the act of creation from the center as moving through multiple levels of densification, which are referred to as spiritual planes or as the planes of nature. The initial zero-dimensional point of creation which physics calls the singularity, in metaphysics is known as the divine plane. This point of the divine plane is the key to the unified field, beyond any polarity which exists in lower worlds of manifestation. Dr. Karim has created a new multi-dimensional wave model, describing the different planes of manifestation and showing which geometric shapes are in resonance with each plane. In practical biogeometry applications, these shapes can act like antennas to focus on a specific plane to either detect and analyze their energy or to direct energy to or from that plane. The highest plane, the divine, manifests its energy through the zero-dimensional point, which manifests in the center of all geometric forms. The circle and sphere the perfect balanced containers for creation resonate with the physical plane where vibrations crystallize into matter. When we connect the highest and the lowest planes in Dr. Karim's model, we see the point in the center of the circle for what it really is, the divine unity plane in the center of the physical world of creation. Dr. Karim's discovery is connected to other scientific discoveries. Recent experiments using laser light to create cavitations within water, which are empty spheres or bubbles, have shown incredible effects which cannot be explained by modern science. When this water bubble collapses, it releases both light and sound, a phenomenon known as sonoluminescence. The instant the water bubble collapses, it also releases a tremendous amount of excess energy in one experiment, when linked to a pump with 840 watts input, it produced 2,800 watts of power, an increase of over 300% of the input energy. Considered impossible in modern physics, but explained in research papers as a possible release of hidden energy from the quantum vacuum, which some people call zero-point energy. Studies of the collapsing water cavity have found that this collapse creates for a millisecond heat of over 5,000 Kelvin. The surface of the sun is 5,800 Kelvin. 
Just as Dr. Kareem's work shows a subtle energy which affects biological life coming from the center of the sphere and all geometric forms, so sonoluminescence research proves massive millisecond releases from the center of collapsing spherical structures in water. So we have now explored the first secret, how the point in the center of the circle image is a packed thought form in the mind of God, which holds encoded information about how the divine geometric center, the singularity, the unified field, manifests the sphere of physical creation. We now come to a second great secret of sacred geometry, which is that every human being can develop the ability to perceive, create, and send these divine packed thought forms of sacred geometry. The precise methods of how to do this have been hidden in closed initiation circles for thousands of years. In the Kabbalah, the mind of God is described as an ocean of fire, which is pure consciousness. Every human being receives a spark from this ocean of fire, and this divine spark becomes our immortal spirit core, our microcosmic part of the one universal being. This flame of our higher spirit core ignites above our head during advanced forms of spiritual initiation. This is seen in the Indian tradition with the flame appearing above the head when a person becomes twice born. And in Christianity, it is seen in the flames above the heads of the disciples, led by Mary Magdalene at Pentecost. In the Western spiritual tradition, it is said that humanity is the microcosm of the macrocosm and that we are the crown of creation. This means that every human being has within them all the planes of creation, all the powers of the Godhead, but in a latent and sleeping form which must be awakened. This is a process of illumination. In other words, increasing our internal light, which we have seen as the external manifestation of divine consciousness itself. We have this incredible slumbering potential because we are a direct emanation of the Godhead, reduced in scale to the microcosmic level, but with all the inherent qualities and powers of the divine. The law of attraction, that you will attract to yourself what you create in your consciousness, is an example of modern teachings on the power of the human mind to create. Science of mind and related mental healing methods are examples of the power of the human mind to heal and to create the fundamental conditions of both illness and health, depending on how skillfully we use our minds. Many healers have found that when they combine the clear focused creation of a thought form holding the desired state of health with whatever method of healing they are applying, that the results improve, sometimes miraculously, this method is very powerful when the light of our consciousness, our mind power, is focused and coherent like a laser light. It is also strengthened when beneficial spiritual beings and energies are lovingly asked to help with the healing. This ability to perceive or create thought forms at the higher macrocosmic level is not based on thinking in words. It is a higher order thinking in mental images, in sounds, in internal vibrational states. It is a thinking that lives and plays in the vibrational essence behind physical things. In humanity's current state of evolution, we break down information into thinking in words, one word at a time to represent every separate component of the thought, and then we slowly build up larger concepts. But this is a very slow method but for angelic beings and more advanced non-physical beings, they can communicate through an instantaneous transmission of a thought form containing densely packed information. We can use the terminology of the late French medical doctor Samuel Sagan, founder of the modern Clairvision School, and call these higher level dense packets of consciousness packed thought forms. Every human being has experienced this type of packed thought form when we have been thinking about some issue 
and then we get into a relaxed state. And then in this open state, we receive a packed thought form in an instant, which contains a huge amount of embedded information. This is the Eureka moment. This is the vision received in the vision quest. This is the transmission received from the spiritual teacher or an angelic being. This is the opening of our awareness to merge with a higher field of consciousness. This secret of packed thought forms brings us to our third secret, that the sacred geometric structures of the human energy body are keys to access our latent spiritual powers. The difference between an ordinary person and a spiritual adept is that the latter has an energy field which is highly activated and sacred geometrically structured. This makes available to them higher states of consciousness and other powers, which appear magical to ordinary people who are stuck in dense, toxic energy fields. For this reason, hidden traditions of initiation around the world train their students to understand where the key spiritual centers are in their energy field and how to activate them. This knowledge of the sacred geometry structures of the human energy system opens up a hidden world which controls health and illness, our mind and emotions, and our latent spiritual potential. There are many different sacred geometry structures in our energy bodies. It's a huge science in itself. Let's clarify now just a few structures which provide the background we need for the powerful energy activation practice you will learn at the end of this episode. The primary energy axis of our body is our central column of energy, which runs in the absolute vertical midline of our body, from the crown center to the perineum at the base of the abdomen. This central column is not the same as the spinal energy circuit described in many traditions. The very existence of this midline central column was kept secret by many traditions, and it features prominently in many of the most powerful spiritual activation practices. In the exact center of the central column runs a golden thread of divine energy, which holds the original unity energy of the divine plane inside the central column in our body. The seven primary energy centers on our central column are known today by their Indian name, chakras, meaning wheel, because they appear on the front and back of the body as spinning vortices of energy. For the five chakras from the third eye or Ajna center in the head down to the sexual chakra, the vortices at each of these five chakras are paired up in the front and the back of the body. The tips of the two vortices meet at the golden thread in the very center of the central column. The very top and bottom chakras along the central channel in our body, the crown or Sahasrara center and the base or Muladhara center are connected together in their own vertical vortex pair right on the central column itself. Our central column continues down from the perineum at the base of the abdomen to go between our legs and then below our feet into the earth to ground us and also continues in the opposite direction, above the human head, to connect us to higher consciousness centers. The energy centers in our physical body can only hold a certain intensity level of power. Otherwise, their high level of voltage would burn out the smaller subtle energy circuits in the human body, which are referred to as nadis in the Indian tradition. However, energy centers in our subtle energy field outside of our physical body can hold much higher energy intensity. This means that the true energy centers we need to activate in order to fully perceive, create, and transmit packed thought forms are actually outside the physical body in our greater energy field. However, before we can activate these higher centers outside of the physical body in a balanced way, we must activate and have our spirit fully inhabit the key chakras in our body. In our modern culture, which is very intellectual and thinking-centric, 
The third eye chakra is often the first chakra to be activated. The third eye chakra is named Ajna in Sanskrit, which means both to perceive and to command. We can use the mind power and light generated by the activated third eye chakra to help activate all the other chakras in the body and energy field. The third eye chakra is often misunderstood in Western circles to be an energy center only in the front of the head between the eyebrows. But as we have seen, there's actually a front and back vortex pair connecting at the third eye chakra. In reality, the third eye is a multi-dimensional geometric structure which runs as a horizontal cylinder of energy from between the eyebrows, connects to the central column in the center of the head, and then continues through to the back of your head. Just as the three 90-degree axes of space define the three-dimensional physical world, so it defines the sacred space in the center of the third eye cylinder. We can call the three axes of space the cubical cross, because it is a cross in three dimensions rather than just two dimensions. And this three-axis cross is the structural infrastructure of the cube shape connected to three-dimensional physical manifestation. The first axis of the cubical cross in the head is the front-back axis just mentioned. The horizontal cylinder of energy running from between the eyebrows to the area of the bump in the back of your head. The second 90-degree axis is the top-down vertical line of the central column we discussed previously. The third axis is the side-to-side -side axis. This can be experienced by putting your attention at the top of both ears and becoming aware of an axis running through the two brain hemispheres and the corpus callosum between the hemispheres. Where these three axes meet in the cubical cross of our head is at the location of the third ventricle of the brain. This is a key spiritual center in the human body called the Cave of Brahma in the Indian tradition. This is a large open area of the brain through which flows the cerebrospinal fluid, a true water of life. The cerebrospinal fluid is a completely different bodily fluid system than the blood or the lymph systems. It is literally a liquid ocean which pulses through the human spine and brain, making life and movement possible in the human body. On the periphery of the third ventricle, within this liquid ocean, are both the pineal and the pituitary glands. These glands are understood in classical traditions to be the key anchors for spiritual development in the human body. In addition to their powerful physical functions as sources of neurotransmitters and body-regulating secretions. By activating the center area of the cubical cross in the head, the cave of Brahma, your entire head system is both activated and stabilized. Activating the cave of Brahma also ignites other energy activations throughout the entire human energy field. This brings us now to a fourth secret, that these hidden practices to activate the human energy system do so by applying the exact same sacred geometry patterns which created our world. These key patterns move energy in the major centers and circuits of the human body and thereby activate our full spiritual potential. This fourth secret connects us to the energetic practice from our first episode, where you learn to activate the first segment of the powerful net energy grid of the human body, which we call the grid of life design or gold. In that first practice, you learn to connect three powerful energy centers around your head into a golden triangle, which clears and elevates our consciousness to higher levels. However, we perform that practice in a very simple way just putting our attention on each of the three energy centers and then mentally connecting them. We can now make these energy activations much stronger and more effective by using a precise sacred geometry pattern. This advanced method applies the core manifestation pattern 
we explored earlier in this episode, the point in the center of the circle, which is the dynamic movement from the divine unity center to the spherical boundary of creation and back again. To apply this powerful pattern for energy activations, we must first understand that to live and survive in our external three-dimensional physical world, we usually move our attention outwards through our physical senses, out into all directions in the world around us. This is the movement from the divine center to the surrounding sphere, the external boundary. The first part of this energy activation practice is to reverse the usual outward movement of our attention back into the center which it comes from. To put it very simply, for physical awareness, we move outwards to our periphery. For spiritual awareness, we move the opposite direction inwards back into the center. By pulling our attention back into the very center of any energy center in the body, we move through layers of the subtle body until we touch the divine core at the center, the zero-dimensional point or zero point. By pulling our energy and consciousness back into the divine center, we activate that center. When activated, this center then reverses the direction of movement so that we switch again from going inward to now having the activated energy center radiate outwards in all directions. This natural counter movement radiates from the center back out to the periphery, but with a much stronger, awakened power than before, now pouring out from that energy center. This creates in our energy body an expanding sphere radiating out from that center point to create a radiant sun around that energy center. The effect of this practice is described and illustrated in virtually every world tradition showing a radiant sun of energy around a person's head or their heart or other activated energy centers. This is the aura of an awakened master, an initiate. This method has two stages. The first stage is the inward movement of our energy and awareness into the center point of an energy center. When our inwardly moving consciousness touches the divine center, this profoundly activates the energy center we are focusing on. This first stage we will call zero-point centering, or ZPC for short. The second stage is the outward expansion from the divine center when it has been activated, turning that energy center we are focusing on into a radiant sun. We will call the second stage the radiance stage. What we are calling zero-point centering and radiance are known by a variety of names in different traditions, center and periphery, expansion and contraction, involution and exvolution, divine pulsation, etc. Unfortunately, when most modern systems teach this practice, they almost always teach only one of the two phases, ignoring or dismissing the other phase. Eastern systems tend to focus only on the inward movement, the zero-point centering movement into the center, whereas Western systems tend to focus only on the outward movement, the radiance out into the surrounding sphere. This is a common metaphysical problem. Many of our modern spiritual practices are based on shattered fragments of the whole, with key parts of the practice missing because we don't understand the full pattern. Sacred geometry holds the key to understanding the complete pattern. It is essential that both parts of this practice, the inwards and outwards movements, are used together to create the optimal balanced activation of any energy center. Otherwise, it's like trying to walk and move forward by only using one foot, or breathing by only using in-breath or out-breath, which ignores the healthy rhythm of alternating the opposite poles of the practice. We can perform this practice on any energy center in the body to activate it. We could even use this method to activate an energy center in another person's body through putting our mind inside their energy center and creating this movement pattern. This activation of an energy center helps to fully manifest that center's inherent powers. 
This awakens the slumbering divine powers within any energy center of our body, while also balancing and restoring harmony and opening up perception of higher non-physical realities. Please keep in mind that external explanations like these are essential to understand these deep initiation processes. However, we must be careful not to fall into the common trap of modern spirituality, which is to intellectually understand a concept, but to have never really experienced the full reality of it. Only by experiencing the practice will you truly know and be benefited by it. Previously, we created the Golden Triangle around the head in Episode 1. Now we will activate the Cave of Brahma in the center of the three-axis cross in the head. This area is a master controller of the brain and body, of the entire sacred geometry net of the human energy field. The Cave of Brahma can activate a wide range of new powers, abilities, and states of consciousness. The practice you are about to learn is almost never described publicly. Instead, it is encoded in sacred geometric imagery, the same way many hidden practices are encoded in sacred geometry images which are understood by initiates but are thought to be simply symbolic by the general public. For example, this activation of the Cave of Brahma in the cubical cross of the head was encoded in the Christian tradition through the Chi Rho symbol of early Christianity, in which the Greek letter Rho, which looks like an English capital P, created the vertical axis of the cubical cross, and the letter Chi, looking like an English X, created the two horizontal axes, which when flattened into 2D looks like an X. This was a symbol for Christ, or more precisely, for Christ consciousness, the activation of the spiritual center in the head into a radiant sun of divine light. This was not only a general representation of the cubical cross as the three axes of physical space, but was specifically shown in the classical images to be inside the head, where icons of Christ show the vertical axis down through the crown center and the horizontal axis through the top of the ears, meeting at the cave of Brahma in the center of the head. This practice is actually quite simple. However, when you first perform it, you will have to train your energy body to learn this new movement. Just as we have to train the physical muscles of our body to perform the movements of a new sport or activity, so we have energetic muscles in our energy field, which most people have no idea even exist. These energetic muscles are in an atrophied state just as if we had not used a physical muscle for decades. So in the beginning, we will need to apply more effort to flex this atrophied energetic muscle again. But through repeated practice, you will find it easier and easier each time to make the sacred geometric energy movement. The practice becomes in time almost effortless and more powerful and tangible with every repetition. This powerful contraction expansion at any energy center brings it back to life and pulsating, just as expansion and contraction of a physical muscle during weightlifting leads to physical growth. This practice of zero-point centering and radiance, done specifically in the center of the cubical cross in the Cave of Brahma, may also activate a range of internal energy circuits in your body, giving rise to sensations or internal perceptions of light color, and vibration. In summary, this is a very effective practice which will allow you to powerfully activate any energy center in your field. If you'd like to do the practice now, please see the companion video for this episode. Otherwise, please set an intention to come back and do the practice at a later time. Please join us for our next episode where we will explore the sacred geometry secrets of the Cup of the Holy Grail and you will learn how to use this form to activate and recharge your entire energetic field. See you then. So, pretty amazing, right? But as Dr. Gilbert explained, only intellectualizing the information without putting it into practice will keep us limited from truly experiencing the awakening within. And so, if you're called to go deeper 
and do the practice and watch the rest of the series. Head over to Gaia using the link in the description and continue the journey right now.